Welcome to Train Signal. You're watching Certification. It's really not that scary. <laughs> We're going to talk about what it is, what to expect, and also I'm going to give you a little bit of how to prepare, all right? So in this video, we'll start off by talking about the new generation of certifications for 2008. There is no such thing as an MCSC 2008 anymore, okay? So don't be mistaken. That's not what we're going for. There's a new designation. I'm also going to talk to you about the upgrade paths just in case you might have an MCSA or MCSE. There's actually a shorter path to the new certifications. I'll talk to you briefly about how to sign up for a Microsoft exam, point you in the right direction for that. And then at the end, I'm going to talk to you about some exam preparation tips. So to begin with, we have basically a new alphabet soup for everyone. Okay, <laughs> I mean, everything is new. There is no such thing as an MCSE 2008. There is no such thing as an MCSA 2008. The new certifications are MCTS. Now, the MCTS certification, by the way, is really a replacement for MCP, Microsoft Certified Professional. All right, so when you take any one test, you get an MCTS designation. Now, there's an MCITP, Microsoft Certified IT Professional, the server administrator classification is really akin to the MCSA, although Microsoft insists that it's not the replacement for the MCSA, but it is. Okay, let's just get that straight. Uh, then we have the MCITP Enterprise Administrator, and this one is really more akin to the MCSE, just so you know. So that really at a higher level than just a server administrator. So we start off, though, with basically MCTS certifications down here at the very bottom of the block of certifications, then this is where most of you are going to be shooting for. You're going to be shooting for Microsoft Certified IT Professional. Unless, of course, you're a programmer, the professional developer, this is for the programmers, okay? And that's a whole different ball of ball of wax there. Now, currently, the higher level of certification, the architect, it's slightly mysterious <laughs> at this stage in the game, although by the time you actually receive this course, there may be a little more uh, information about how to get an architect certification. At this time, there's actually a new certification that was just recently announced called the Microsoft Certified Master. And that's not on this chart, as you see. And that's another new higher level certification. So like the master certification would be like probably right in here, I think. <laughs> or it might, you know, the master certification might be akin to the architect. But the architect certification and the master certification are going to be separate. So that's kind of what we're looking at in terms of the new designations. Uh, now, what you need to take for each credential, all right? Let's start off with the MCTS, the bottom layer. Uh, the Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist, you can take any one exam from a pretty large selection of exams. And when you do, you get one of these nifty logos. If you take a lot of certification exams like I do, you end up with a whole bunch of Microsoft Certified Technology Specialists. And you see, here's mine. Uh, this one has SharePoint Server, Applications Infrastructure and the 2008 Active Directory certification on it. So when you get multiple TS certifications, you can actually build a kind of a nifty logo using Microsoft's Logo Builder that you'll get access to. It's on their website. You'll get access to it when you pass your first certification. Now, the next level up is the Server Administrator, MCITP. Now, if you're going to get this designation from scratch, you need to take at least three exams, okay? You're going to need to start off by taking the 7640 TS Active Directory. Now, of course, that's what this video course is all about, right? Then you need to take 642, which is Network Infrastructure. And that's all about DNS servers and DHCP and all that good stuff. And then you're going to take, last but not least, the 7646 Server Administrator. Now, you can take these exams, by the way, in any order you want. It doesn't make any difference to me or to Microsoft, but you have to complete all three of these exams to gain this designation if you're going from scratch okay so if you don't have any other certifications right now you need to take these three now the enterprise administrator which is one level up if you're going to take it it's five exams from scratch first of all you need to take a vista exam yeah i know kind of odd isn't it but they want to make sure that the enterprise administrator designated or credentialed individuals have a foundation of knowing how to work with the vista operating system then you need to take 7640. Again, you know, what we're covering in this course. The 7642, which is network infrastructure again. 
643, which is application infrastructure, and that covers stuff like SharePoint, file and print services, and Windows deployment services. There's all kinds of stuff in that one. I thought that was kind of a fun exam to tell you the truth. There's all kind of, it's, it's this big mishmash of all kinds of stuff in it. And then last, you need to take 647, which gives you that ITP behind your name, uh, the Enterprise Administrator. So as you see, it, it's pretty achievable. You know, even if you're just going to go for the server administrator, it's only three exams. And as you pick up each one of these, these exams, you get additional technology specialist certifications too. Now, most of the time, if you're going to go for the MCITP, you're probably not going to uh, spend a lot of time, you know, displaying a technology specialist with all of this stuff on it. You're probably just going to display the MCITP logo, chances are. But, you know, it's kind of fun to get a whole bunch of certifications behind your name. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it, it's definitely an ego boost. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the upgrade paths, okay? Now you know what the basic core from scratch methods are. If you are an MCSA 2003 and you want to move up to the Server 2008 equivalent, which is MCITP Server Administrator, it's pretty easy. You just need to take two exams, very doable, uh, you need to take 648, and by the way, that covers the material in Active Directory configuration. So actually, this course will help you with part of the 648 exam, just so you know. It also covers stuff from the Network Infrastructure uh, exam, too. So you're actually going to get two additional MCTS certs, both in the Server 2008 Active Directory configuration and Server 2008 Network configuration. Okay, So you actually get two MCTSs. Then, after you complete that one, you can take 7646 and then get this nice, bright, shiny server administrator designation. So two exams, and you actually end up with three certifications from two exams, just so you know. You get these two certifications as well as the server administrator designation as well. So pretty achievable. I mean, this is not that difficult if you are already an MCSA 2003 systems administrator. Now, if you're an MCSA 2003 and you want to upgrade to MCITP Enterprise Administrator, if you want to take it one step up, this one's a little more, uh, a little more intensive. But the good news is you only have to take four tests instead of five. Okay, so you can take the 648 again, and again that provides the same two Microsoft Certified Technology Specialist certifications. You're still going to need to take the 7620, or by the way, you can also take the 624. And this one is actually deployment of Vista. Okay? Then you need to take 7643, which is applications infrastructure. And then last but not least, you need to take 647, which is ITP Enterprise. Okay, So again, you get to take one less test if you are already an MCSA 2003, which is nice. You know, I mean, if you have already put the time and effort into getting this one, you know, at least you, you, know, you can actually skip out on one last test assuming that you take the 648. Now, by the way, if you take the 648 and you do not have an MCSA 2003, it's not going to help you, okay? <laughs> you have to have an MCSA 2003 in order to get the two Microsoft Certified Technology Specialists from 648, okay? They go together. All right, let's move on to the MCSC 2003 now. If you're an MCSE, and you want to move up just to server administrator, it's real easy. You take two tests, 649, which provides you with three MCTSs. Now remember, 649 requires that you must be or an MCSC 2003. Okay? You can't just take 649 out of the blue and get these three MCTSs. You also have to have the MCSA 2003 designation. And then you can just take the 646 MCITP server administrator and bada boom, bada bang you get the nice shiny server admin. Now then, if you are a, an MCSE 2003 and you want to pick up the Enterprise Administrator, which is really closer to the MCSE, by the way, then you need to take only three exams. So if you're already an MCSE, you, know, you can actually skip out on two exams. Okay? You get to take the 649, which provides you with those same three TS exams or certifications. You still have to take the VISTA exam. Okay. Now, you can't get away from this if you want to get the Enterprise Administrator. You have to take that VISTA exam or at least the deployment of VISTA exam, okay? Then you take the 647 exam, 
and then bada boom, bada bang, you get your enterprise administrator designation, which in the IT professional side of certification is about as high as you can go unless you want to qualify for the architect or the master certifications. Okay, now how you sign up for a Microsoft exam. It's pretty easy. There's actually only one website where you can do this at. It's prometric.com. Hey, you can't get a Microsoft exam anywhere else. It's pretty easy to sign up. You go down here to test takers and you put in IT and then you go to, to the Microsoft section. You know, it's not hard, okay? If you can't sign up for an exam using the Prometric website, then you might want to think about taking another career path, okay? <laughs> it's really super easy. And um, you just go to this website and jump through their hoops. Now, one quick note, Microsoft periodically offers free second shots. And what that is, is if you fail your exam, you get to take it again for free a second time. So you might want to check the Microsoft site first to see if they're currently offering that. You know, it kind of goes in and out, it seems. But it is a nice way to kind of alleviate some exam anxiety. Which, by the way, I want to let you know, there's no reason to be nervous about these exams if you know the material. I mean... I'll talk to you about those in just a second, but uh, if you are nervous about the exam, make sure you sign up for Microsoft Second Shot if it's available. And again, it kind of goes in and out of style, it seems, with them. But let me talk to you about some prep, okay? First of all, I'm going to recommend one more resource to you, actually two more resources, for getting some decent, solid exam prep. Of course, this course is, is good exam prep. I, <laughs> you know, I'm not putting it together for my health. You know, I'm putting it together so not only just to give you some real solid skills, but also to help get you ready for the 7640 exam. But here's a book that I really recommend, uh, the Microsoft Press MCTS 7640 book. Uh, it's good, you know. You're probably not going to want to pick it up and read it cover to cover because, well, it's a technical manual, you know. I mean, I suppose you could. You know, if you don't have any other resources in the world and you just pick up this book, it's probably going to help you a lot getting towards getting ready for the exam. However, if you use the book in conjunction with this video course that you're watching, you can use the book as a good reference. If there's something you just want to learn a little more about, uh, it's a great place to start. It's very, very comprehensive. It's one of the first Microsoft Press books in a long time. I've, I've really felt good to be able to recommend. So I, you know, I recommend getting this particular book and using it as a reference manual. You may not want to use it as just a read through, you know, unless you have trouble sleeping at night. Okay, <laughs> then it'll put you right to sleep. All right, um, take the Transcender Practice Exam several times. Okay, the Transcender Exam is of course included with this video course, and then look up the stuff that you miss in this video course or in the Microsoft Press book. If you have this video course, the Microsoft Pressbook, and the Transcender exams, if you go through them and use them well, you're not going to have any problem getting through the 7640 exam. Okay, And it's, it's relatively cheap to do so. It's a lot cheaper to use these three resources, this video course, the book, and the Transcender exam, versus going to a $2,000 class. Okay, it's a, So there's, you're going to have some cost savings and get just as good of a knowledge foundation for it. Now, I'm also going to recommend that you review this course at least twice, okay? Uh, and also, get some virtual machines. If you go to Microsoft's website, and you, you can actually download their virtual server application for free. And you can create virtual server 2008 machines using the trial edition. They do have trial editions available also for download on the web. Get some of those things and, and push some buttons. Punch around on server 2008. Get to know it. You know, go back and try to replicate a lot of the stuff that I've done in this course. Because you know what? The stuff that I've done in this course is not rocket science as you've seen. You just need to know where to go in order to click the right buttons. So I'm going to highly recommend getting some real experience on it, you know, even if it is just in a test environment. Okay, on the day of the test, this is important, all right? By the day of the test, you should have viewed this course, read through any books you might be able to get your hands on, and gone through the transcenders, okay? Do not stay up all night studying. This is a mistake that a lot of people make. And if you go into the test exhausted, you're not going to be ready for it. You're probably not going to perform as well. You still might get past it if you do. But I'm going to recommend you get some good sleep the night before. 
you want to be awake and alert for whatever questions Microsoft might want to throw at you that day. When you go into the test center, leave your cell phone and anything else in your car. Bring in only two forms of ID and your car key. Now, here's the thing. You must have two forms of ID. Okay? If you only have your driver's license or if you only have your social security card or whatever identification your country or state requires, you're going to be out in the cold. You have to have two forms of ID. Otherwise, you, they will not let you take the test. Okay? Now, before you take the test, when you sit down in the testing room, before you hit the start the test button, I want you to stop and breathe and just relax. Okay? At this stage in the game, you either know the material or you don't. The nice thing about these new certification exams is that, I mean, the Server 2003 exams and the Server 2000 exams, and I've taken both sets of those, by the way, it was really more of a reading comprehension exam of whether, whether or not I actually knew the material. So by the time you walk into that room, you either know the stuff or you don't, okay? And if you've gone through this video course, if you, you know, look stuff up in the book, you've taken the transcenders and you have a pretty good feel on the material, again, you either know it or you don't. So stop and breathe, relax, okay? If you walk into the test room and you're all jittery, you're not going to do as well, right? So I really want you to stop and breathe before you take the test. Now, during the test, and this is also very important, do not forget to breathe. Now, <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but you know what? In one of my former jobs, when I worked at a place that also had a test center, we actually had a guy pass out in the test room because he wasn't breathing, because he was so jittery. So don't forget to breathe during the exam. Your brain needs oxygen. Okay? If your brain is getting the oxygen that it needs, you will have a much more smooth test experience. Now, I know you think this is kind of these are kind of silly things, okay? But they're not <laughs> because you know they're just little things about you know taking the test that you want to remember. Now here's another tip: when you're taking the test, you will have the option to mark a question for review the first time through. So if you have a question that you're just stumped on, or you think you know what, I'm really going to have to stop and think about this one, mark it for review and go to the next question. You can always go back to those questions you marked for review at the end of the test. And by the way, if you don't answer a question, you can also go back and answer questions after the first time through, too. All right? So don't feel like you absolutely have to have the answer to one of the questions before you can move on to the next one, because you will be able to go back to the ones you, you just weren't sure about after you do the first time through. Now, I'm also going to share with you another strategy here, and this is what I do. You don't have to do this. You, it may not even be a good idea, okay? <laughs> but I go through the test the first time as fast as I can, answering the ones I'm absolutely sure about. Anything that I don't know, I mark for review. I get to the end of the test. I go back and I review all the ones that I marked. But before I do that, I do some quick math. If I know that I have to have a 700, which is about a 70%, in order to pass the exam, I do some quick math. If there's questions that I'm not sure about, Let's say that I have, I've only marked three questions, okay? And I'm not completely sure about those three questions. I end the exam <laughs> because I figure, you know what? I am mostly sure about just about all of the questions except for those three. Even if I get those three wrong, chances are I'm still going to pass the test. And here's the thing. Microsoft exams are pass or fail. Nobody except for you and Prometric know what your score was. Although I'm sure Microsoft probably does too, but, you know, once you get your score report, that will be the last time you see the score. And nobody really cares what your score was. When you go in and you say, hey, you know what? I'm certified as an MCITP. That's all they care about. Do you have the designation? They don't care whether you scored a 700, 737, or a 1,000. So you might want to use my methodology, and you might not. <laughs> okay? You know, if you do and you fail a test, I am not responsible. Okay, you can't come back and sue me because this is not, <laughs> it's just, I'm just telling you what I do, okay? Okay, so enough about that. Let's talk about the biggest tip I can give to you, and that is to know the material. Okay? Again, the new certification exams aren't nearly as nasty as the old certification exams were. I know I've taken a whole bunch of them. If you know the material, you're not going to have a problem on the exam. If you don't know the material, well, then you you're going to be reduced down to guessing. <laughs> okay, So make sure you know the stuff before you walk in the door. 
I'm convinced that you have either passed or failed the exam before you even walk into the test center, based upon your preparation. If you know the material, you can walk in and probably waltz the exam without a problem. But you got to know the material, okay? All right, so after watching this video, let's talk about what we've done, and then we'll get into the certification topics that we were including in here, too. Uh, where you should now be able to describe the requirements for the MCTS and the MCITP tracks. You should also be able to describe the upgrade paths for MCSAs and MCSEs to MCITP. You should also be able to sign up for an exam on the ProMetric website. And hopefully go in and pass the exam because you will have prepared well by using this video course, using the Microsoft Pressbook if you can get a hold of it, and also use the transcenders. Okay? Now, can I give you a 100% guarantee that you will pass the exam? No, I can't. Okay? Because you might buy this video course and stick it on the shelf. Okay? You might buy the Microsoft Press book and hide it under your bed or sleep on it as you and use it as a pillow. I can't, you know, I can't guarantee that if you buy these things uh, that you will absolutely pass the test. What I can guarantee is that if you prepare well, you will have a much greater chance at passing that exam. Okay. All right, now the next few videos in this series, we're going to be talking about DNS stuff. We're going to be talking about lightweight directory services, PKI, and rights management. Now, these topics, are I've taken them outside of the Global Mantic story. I want you to understand that the next few videos are primarily certification and topic-based because the topics just didn't fit very well into our whole Global Mantic story. But I wanted to make sure that I included them because there are going to be questions on the exam, so the next few videos are going to be primarily certification topic-based. Now, it's not to say that I'm not going to give you some real skills and real knowledge about it, because I am. All right, But for the most part, the next few videos are going to be very much based around certification. All right, so the next video we're going to talk about is on those one of those certification topics. Let's go ahead and let's roll on to the next one.